Hello, could be a community. In this video, we will see how to install and run the OpenShift Web Console in a native Kubernetes cluster. The OpenShift Web Console is a friendly web user interface that with its deep integrations with Kubert allows us to create, manage and delete virtual machines from a web browser. We have found two options to run the OpenShift Web Console to manage our Kubernetes cluster. One is compiling and executing the web console as a binary. This one is detailed in the official OpenShift web console GitHub repository. The other method is executing the web console as a Kubernetes application in a pod, in the same way as OpenShift and OKD do. Now we are going to describe all the steps needed to create and run the binary web console. In our lab, we already have deployed a Kubernetes cluster along with Kubert and a CentOS 8 server, which is not part of it and where the web console will be executed. The workflow is pretty simple. From our laptop, we are going to interact with the web console running on the CentOS server, port 9000. All our interactions in the web console will be reflected in the Kubernetes cluster through a connection established between the web console and the cluster master API. Note the different IPs. Let's start building our web console. First, see that we are connected to the CentOS server and that we already have a Kubernetes 1.17 cluster deployed. Now, let's install all the dependencies needed to build the console. Note that you can take advantage of installing GoLand and Node.js from the new upstream repositories available in this CentOS version. See that in order to install Jarn, we need to add first Jarn's specific repository. Now that the packages are installed, let's clone the OpenShift Web Console repository. It can take a few minutes. Once cloned, let's prepare for building the binary. The environment.sh file exports several variables that are needed during the building process and also when the web console is running as we see later. Then source it. Note then verify that the Kubernetes API shown in the terminal matches your cluster. Then start the building process by executing the build.sh file. Once the building process is finished, prepare for running the binary. Since the OpenShift Web Console listens on port TCP 9000, check that this port is not in use and accessible. Then, execute the bridge binary file. Now, you can connect to the Web Console running on the CentOS server using your web browser. It is likely that you face the same permission issue with the default service account shown in the video. Let's fix the problem. See that the environment file configures the web console to run as the default service account in the keep system namespace. There are two ways to fix the issue. One is granting cluster admin permissions to the default service account, which is not recommended at all. And the other option is create a new service account called console, grant it with cluster admin permissions and configure the web console to run with this new service account.
Once the console service account is created, edit the environment file and replace the default with the console service account. Then export the environment variables and execute the OpenShift web console binary again. Notice that the permissions issue is gone and now we can see the overall status of our native Kubernetes cluster. See that we can manage our running Kubernetes virtual machine by editing its YAML configuration file and even connect to the serial console through the web browser. Thank you for watching.